Hi, good afternoon. My name is uh, Ciro Noronha. I'm with uh, Cobalt Digital. And I am going to tell you about what's coming in uh, risk main profile. This presentation was done by myself and Adi Rosenberg from VideoFlow. So here's what I'm going to talk about. We start with the risk timeline. is a, a little view of the past, what's happened so far. Um, we, we do a quick review of what's, av what's available in Risk Simple Profile that's shipping now and uh, from a, a number of vendors it has been for a while. And then we go into main profile features, which is tunneling, security, bandwidth, and optimization. And we'll, uh, I don't need to read that. We'll go, we're going to get to it. So how did we get here, Risk Timeline? We started talking about that in uh, February 17. It was the... Uh, Vitrans conference in Los Angeles, in Marina del Rey, at the very end of the conference, Rick Ackerman uh, stands up and says, we're creating this thing about risk and, and, and transmission of the internet. So between uh, February 17 and April 17, we didn't do anything. And then we had <laughs> a meeting at NAB in, seven, in uh, April 17 when it actually started. We worked on it for a year. We, uh, I would say we fought about it for a year, but uh, we got to some very good consensus. And uh, on April 18, in the next face-to-face -face meeting, we sort of approved the pre 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 preliminary specification. And uh, we pushed hard, and then in May, 7, May, uh, May 18, we had an interrupt at Cisco in the VSF May meeting. Well, we all got together there. Well, I was the only one who actually went, because it's in my backyard, and people sent me streams over the internet. Uh, it was actually, the hardest part of that was to get Cisco to open some firewalls and let us in. I had to go to some uh, like very high VP, but we got it done, because we know people in the right places. So we learned a whole bunch of stuff uh, on that interop, and then in July of uh, 18, we approved the... Uh, second draft for simple profile. We made some changes between the first and second draft, made it better. And then uh, in September 18, there was the first public demo uh, interrupt uh, at IBC. IBC last year, we had a pretty nice demo uh, on uh, YouTube, actually. And uh, right after that, we published uh, Risk Simple Profile, I went to the VSF board, and then got published. And uh, April, uh, April uh, no, it should have been 19, sorry, April 19, we had a public interrupt at NAB with commercial products. And uh, in September 19, we uh, approved the main profile draft in, on, in the uh, activity group. Um, and uh, it's, we are currently demonstrating it live here at, at IBC with a YouTube demo. So, what we have, what, what is in Simple Profile? This is just a quick, quick review. Uh, we have uh, compatibility with non-risk streams using RTP. We have packet loss recovery using NAC-based ARQ. And this is, as I said, top of the line because it's bandwidth efficiency and it's a tunable uh, trade-off between latency and protection. And other cool things that are already in, in in Risk Simple Profile are multi-link support. In, we have bonding, where you can combine the bandwidth of multiple links into, into a higher bandwidth link. And we have seamless switching. When you, uh, when you absolutely need reliability, you send, you send two copies of the stream, and the receiver just merges it. So if one link goes away, the other one takes over, and there's no glitch. And we also have multicast support. Is that all? Are we done? No, there's stuff missing from Simple Profile. That's why we keep on working, right? The first one is encryption. It's not in Simple Profile. You have, uh, your, your, your stuff is valuable and needs to be protected in flight on the internet. And sometimes this is a, a contractual requirement. People who for, uh, supply your content, sometimes you have to sign a contract saying if it's outside the facility, it needs to be encrypted. Authentication, 
You have to make sure that, I mean, you're sending over the internet. Are, are you connected to the right place? Is, is they, are they who they, you think they are? Simplify all conf configuration. Uh, right now, in Simple Profile, you have uh, to open two UDP ports per stream. If you have lots of streams, a lot. So you're not going to be very popular with your IT department uh, if you have lots of streams. So we need to simplify that. And uh, another important thing is uh, in-band control. You establish a connection. You may, maybe you want the technician to go write that connection back to the equipment and do tweaking. You sent a reporter in the field. The only requirement that reporters look good, good in camera. They're not going to know anything about how to set up an encoder. So technician may be, uh, may be needed to go write that, that connection and make an adjustment. You can, it would be ideal to do that. In fact, it's customer requirement that I've seen. And finally, um, we support scenarios with a high bit rate la latency conditions. Basically, if, uh, if you're, you're pumping high bit rate, maybe you're thinking about uncompressed, you, 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 it would be nice to support that. So we can do further bandwidth. Uh, uh, finally, we can do further bandwidth optimization by not sending no packets. And I'll talk about that later, because uh, the MPEG people, be, they are say, ooh, ooh, we need the no packets, and your timing is going to be screwed up. No, we'll fix it. Don't worry. Let me get there. So let's start with tunneling and multiplexing. The purpose is to co combine one or more simple profile streams plus arbitrary data traffic into a single network flow using UDP. Why you do that? Only one UDP port needs to be configured in the firewall. So that's the thing, make you popular with your IT department. Only one thing for them to do. Adi likes that. Only one encryption session is needed to protect the whole thing. So uh, let's work there too. And uh, you can initiate the session from either location in simple profile. The, the receiver is always the, the, the server, and the sender has always to initiate. Maybe you don't want to do that. You want to you have the flexibility to initiate in, in both sides. And the tunnel is, bi is bi bidirectional. And uh, the same infrastructure can be optionally used for in-band control. You can do SNMP, web is the thing I was talking about. The reporters there are looking good for the camera, and the technician may be making an adjustment from the head end, and you don't have to send that guy into the field. So, how do we do that? Um, we have selected uh, GRE over UDP RFC 8086. The, me the number doesn't mean anything, 8086, it's just a number. And it has two modes. We have one that's called full datagram mode, where uh, we encapsulate a complete, complete layer 3 packet, and that's how we can, get, can do in-band control. Um, and then you, that, we do that to support end-to-end -end transport of addresses and ports. So if you're sending, say, a multicast, that survives. You don't have to go configure the same thing in the other side. It's carried for you. Okay? And generic IP packets. Anything you want to send, SNMP, web, it's possible. Uh, you can do in-band control and generic routing. The overhead of that is 32 bytes. It's 2.4% uh, using your traditional uh, 70 SRTP packet. Now, if that's too much for you and you, you want to give up some, some stuff, we have a reduced overhead mode where we send only UDP source and destination ports. It's a, something custom that uh, we added in uh, Risk Simple Profile. And uh, it's just, just risk streams at that point. And uh, you reduce the overhead. So it's only eight bytes for that. So here's uh, an example. Thank you very much, Adi, for uh, drawing that very nice picture for me, for us, right? So in this case, there is an example where the connection is initiated by the risk receiver side which is not supported in simple profile, and you can send two independent streams. Another very nice picture is uh, bidirectional plus data, where uh, the tunnel client starts the connection, and now you can send it in both directions plus management data. 
which is, again, something that you, you couldn't do in a risk simple profile. Another example is uh, a smart gateway. You have some simple profile receivers on one side, some data thing, whatever that you have over there, anything, anything goes, and you can encapsulate, and the gateway can uh, split it all on the other side. So it makes it transparent. And uh, here's uh, where Adi did a really good job <laughs> on this drawing, which is the bonded tunnels, where you can, you can have the same thing you had in, in a simple profile, but with tunnels. Okay, so mix everything up. You have data, you have a sender, you have a receiver, one on each direction, and you bond two tunnels and make it all happen with a risk main profile. Another thing you can do is a tunnel negotiation. So we came up with this very smart JSON scheme where you can negotiate parameters of the tunnel. So you can negotiate IP addresses. If you're going to do a full routing thing, inside the tunnel, it's all over here. You can tell them what IP address you want, you can tell them to, to assign you an IP address, and you're telling me, well, that looks lo a lot like a VPN, and it kinda is, but it's, it's better. It's better because we're smarter, right? We can do all of that stuff. Yeah, he doesn't agree with me, but uh, I gotta do a little bit of marketing here. So that's the first thing in this single, simple profile. It's, it's uh, the tunneling. Combining multiple streams, making it simpler to configure, and uh, data, bidirectional data. Next thing is content protection. So, valuable content needs to be protected. Sometimes, as I said, it's required by your contract. If it's going out of your facility, it's got to be encrypted. No ifs or buts on that. So, obviously, the solution is to encrypt that. And we got to add that to uh, main profile. Another point is uh, different parts of the world have different requirements. So there is no one size fits all in terms of uh, encryption. You've got to have options. So and, and finally, uh, any solution have, needs to have a possibility of uh, fallback. That's the example that uh, Rex always says. It's got to be encrypted, but if it's not working, it has to go to air right now. Maybe not. <laughs> so we have a fallback. And we need to uh, have some fixed key operation supported for one to, one to many scenarios. So that's required. The other thing that's needed that's independent of encryption is, is authentication. Those are different things, authentication and encryption. They are solved by the same t types of things, but they are different things. Um, you have to make sure that the endpoint you're talking to is who you think they are. You have a publishing point in the internet, reporter is going to connect to it. You don't want some Yahoo to hijack it and put their content on there, right? So here's some scenarios. Reporter transmitting the side, the field, publishing point on the internet. Is it, is, it, is it really him or her? Remote feed going on air, publishing point open on the internet. Can, can someone hijack that and push their own content? Endpoints need to be authenticated if you care about that. So that's another requirement. What's, what, what did we do there? What's the main profile solution? We went with uh, existing technology. We used something called DTLS. The TLS is the UDP version of the TLS, which you guys all use to connect your bank on the web. For, for encryption, that's a good thing. Use a known vetted solution. Don't invent something new, because people are going to say, no, no, no way. Uh, who, who, who's reviewed that? How, how good is that? No, use a, some vetted solution. So. It's a, it's a technology that's already used in the internet. It's mature and well vetted. And it has the ability to uh, select multiple cipher to, to match all kinds of requirements. So there's a minimum list that RISC defines that everybody has to support that ensures compatibility. And at the same time, we leave it open if you're a vendor 
and the other you, uh, you want to su support something else on top of that list, you are allowed to. And the TLS then is applying applied to the tunnel. So for the crypto heads uh, between you, let's talk about which uh, cipher suites we have. Um, that subset all the vendors uh, have to include. So we 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 selected AS128 and 256, and then also no encryption, which is optional fallback. Before you come and kill me saying, oh yeah, you have no encryption and it's not gonna work, someone's gonna break into my, my signal, it's optional in case things go bad. So this is a good compromise between encryption strength and our ability to adhere to local re legal requirements. Some places you, in the world, you cannot do 256, you're just not allowed. And there's some people who say, oh, no, 128, that's insecure. I'm never going to let that. So you've got to offer both, both of them. Individual vendors uh, are free to add to the list. If there's some new encryption you want to do, you can you just put it in there. PSK operation. So we have a pre-shared key. And here's some details. I'm having it fly in because my friend Sergio over here is going to have a very uh, detailed presentation on that. So these are all good things. Uh, AS128256, uh, pre-share uh, passphrase, variable IV, and uh, support for rotating keys. Uh, uh, Sergio's talk is going to dive into a lot of detail of that. This is suitable for one-to-many and uh, unidirectional environments. So here's a ni another nice picture, courtesy of video flow, that's showing the tunnel encryption where uh, and, the, and the firewall. So you, and you, it's showing that you can have authentication or not as, as you wish. So both directions, and you apply to the tunnel as a whole. Bandwidth optimization. All right. An MPEG transport stream, and this transport stream is specific, you usually have about 5% no packets. Better muxes will go less than 5, but uh, 5% is kind of typical. The no packet, they have no data. They are padding, but they are necessary to keep stream timing. So you can just get rid of them, because then your PCR jitter goes through the roof. But we can reclaim that bandwidth by doing this. You remove no, no packets b before transmitting, but you keep track of where they were. You need to know where they were. And then you signal that. You send a smaller packet, and you signal that where they, they were. And then in the decoder, and the receiver, uh, you insert them back in the same places as, uh, as they were before. So this way, you reclaim the bandwidth. You send shorter packets. So you get 5% five, five or whatever it is. And you don't screw up this, the stream timing. And uh, since I like to uh, uh, claim the standards, it's allowed by 13A1H section 241, where it says, don't assume that the, the payload to no packets is trans, is, uh, stays from end to end. So it's perfectly legal to do that, that stuff. And here's another nice picture that shows uh, the no packets in the available bit rate, and you can the, then use this part here that you, you freed up to run your protection. And if it's a lot of streams, you can maybe put another stream in there. Now, extensions for high bit rate operation. So this risk stuff is all good, nice. Can we do it with uh, like 2110? Can we do it uncompressed? That's high bit rate. There, there's a problem there. Because we, did, we built it on top of uh, RTP, and it's just, just a 16-bit sequence number. So limits the NAC window, window to 64K packets, and that's insufficient at, at high bit rates, because uh, the higher the bit rate, the more packets are in flight, given the latency. So we, uh, we, did a, uh, we proposed a, a header extension to bring the sequence number to 32 bits, which is four gig packets. And here's the yet another very nice picture, picture showing you why we need that. At 100 megabits per second, 
uh, 7,000 packets in the, in, the, in the window at 64K, uh, if you do seven retries, that's a maximum RTT. It's a second. It's kind of, kind of viable, depending on the, on the internet uh, connection you have. But if you go higher than that, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. At a gigabit, you can do an RTT more than 100, 100 milliseconds. That, most links are going to be more than that. So you absolutely need to do that if you want to go high bit rate. So main profile is status. We have a demo available on YouTube. So if you open YouTube and look for RIST IBC 2019, you're going to see a very nice demo there. It's running right now. All the streams are up, at least they were at the beginning of my presentation. We have a number of companies participating. Uh, the usual suspects, Cobalt, DVU, Evert, Net Inside, Navium, QVideon, VideoFlow, and Zixi. And I put them in alphabetical order. The Zixi guy says, next time I do a company, I'm not going to do something that starts with a Z. You should think about that too, uh, Aji. V is almost there too. Those streams are running from over the internet from multiple locations to the Cobalt headquarters in Illinois. And then we're turning it around and publishing it to YouTube. I actually have a screenshot. What we're demonstrating there is GRE tunneling, DTLS encryption, and uh, that's, that's what's demonstrating. And uh, the, the status of the specification is we, at the working group, we agreed. Can I say that, Adi? Yeah, we agreed. We agreed, and that's going to go eventually to the uh, VSF board, and then it gets published. We all agreed. It's a draft. Yeah, so we have a draft, and it's approved. And Sergio over there told me that he's got comments. <laughs> so so uh, we're going to do some uh, minor uh, clarification. And we expect in the next few months to have publication. And full, full functionality demo for VTrans 2020. And this is, this is what we're sending over YouTube right now. If you do the, this is just a, a screen grab. But YouTube right now, you see the companies transmitting. There's people in this room are transmitting. Each one of these is, uh, an, HD, uh, is an HD stream. At the Cobalt headquarters, this is being transformed back into a physical HD SDI signal. Then I throw it in a multi viewer and I publish to YouTube for you guys to see it uh, in real time. Now, of course, YouTube is very, there are a lot of latency, so you're seeing it like 50 seconds in the past. So um, when you have a minute, you, you try it on your phone. It may or may not work depend, depending on the internet here. And that is what I had. And uh, as I promised, 25 minutes with five minutes for question. Any questions? Everybody's sleeping? They took the coffee away. That's the problem. Yes? On the page about the encryption, I noticed you use CTR mode. Um, for the distribution side, you know, adaptive bit, bit rate streaming, we are slowly, gradually moving to CBC mode. Uh, so I wonder what's the reason, justification for choosing CTR? CTR mode in, in, uh, CTR mode in uh, fixed key. Sergio, you want to take that one? sequence number. So that, that gives us uh, enough security uh, that we don't need to use a, a complex chain method of encryption. Uh, during the entire lifetime of the stream, we have unique sequence number. And if they ever wrap after 2 billion packets, that's very unlikely, we have another field, the nonce field, which changes. So doing that gives us uh, non-change non-chained way of doing encryption with uh, enough security. Yeah. 
Thank you. He's going to talk more about that in the PSK discussion. This is why I gave it to him. That's also because I didn't know the answer. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. I should have read the spec, but is it optional, the um, mechanism for optimizing the padding packets? Is it optional or mandatory in the spec? Uh, the reason I ask that is that in the past, I've seen some companies using padding packets to transmit useful information, such as uh, scrambling information, thinking of very matrix, for instance. I don't know if it's still the case, but um, maybe we should be a bit uh, prudent about that. Okay, let me comment on that. First, uh, answer to your question, yes, it's optional. You don't have to do it. In fact, there is even a, a flag in the negotiation that says you, you're willing to do that. Now, there's some misguided people in the industry that think they can put uh, content in no packets. Those people should be taken out and counseled. This is why I put section 2.4.1 of ISO IEC 13818-1. No packet payload transmission is not guaranteed. It should not be assumed, OK? But uh, we have convictions, but we also like uh, money, right? We, if we're selling a system, uh, you do whatever they want. So yes, it's optional. Any more questions? All right, thank you for your attention, and I thought there was, hope this was entertaining. Thank you.